Friday here at the Mecca of poker rooms, the largest poker room in all of the world. We're at the Commerce Casino, currently 82 tables running. Got in town in the early afternoon, here with a good friend of mine for a short two day vacation. And yeah, got things started off right by going to Porto's Bakery and Cafe. It's a fantastic bakery uh, that my buddy's pretty aware of. First time there for me and got a pretty amazing uh, burger there. So definitely recommend checking that spot out if you're looking for some good baked goods. After lunch, just rested a little bit before getting over here to the Commerce at about 9.30. Been on the table for about an hour or two so far. And the last time I put in a session in Los Angeles, if you don't count uh, the session in vlog 11 at Agua Caliente at Palm Springs, was actually vlog number one. So that's when this entire project started, I believe last September, October. All right, first time here at the Gardens Casino in Hawaiian Gardens, California. And I wanted to check out the bike, but I double checked the games that they had and the game selection wasn't all that great. So ended up coming over to Commerce instead. This is, I think my second or third time here. And yeah, it's just a really, really cool experience when you have that many poker tables in the room. And yeah, as mentioned, been playing for a couple hours now. I've hopped into the 510 game. It's a 500 to 1500 buy-in. I've got a few semi-interesting hands to share thus far. And the very first hand, before I even get chips, there's a hijack raise to $25. I'm in the middle position with ace jack offsuit. I make the call and small blind and big blind make the call as well. We go four ways to a flop of queen jack six, two hearts. Uh, checks over to me and with middle pair here, I think it's okay to just check it back. So that's what I do. The turn brings a five of clubs. Small blind leads this time for $60. Everyone folds to me, and I think this is a pretty clear call, so that's what I do. The river brings a queen of spades, and he doesn't stop betting. He puts out a bet of $75. It's a good card for me, given that it pairs the queen, so he's less likely to have a queen in his hand. Uh, again, pretty easy call, so that's what I do. And he turns over pocket 10, so drag this one in, very first hand sitting down, and get a nice welcome to the table. In this next hand, I've got a seven of diamonds in the under the gun position. And I raise it to $30, maybe a little bit loose in a full ring game, but uh, suited ace here and just trying to feel out the table. I think it's okay. So make the raise to $30 and only the cutoff makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of 993, two diamonds. Flop the nut flush draw here. So good board to see bet. Uh, put out a bet of $30 and he makes the call. The turn comes a five of clubs and I decided to check it for unknown reason. Looking back on it, it's a good blank card to continue betting and rep over pairs here. But I do check it and he puts out a bet. He puts out a bet of $110 and with the equity and the flush draw, I think it's a clear call, so that's what I do. The river comes a king of clubs, so I brick out on the draws. I decide to check it and he checks it back. Uh, I turn my hand over and he turns over pocket four. So he takes this one down. I think I probably could have got him off that hand if I played the hand a little bit more aggressively, but shied away this time. Our last semi interesting hand to note is a middle position limp. I'm in the hijack with king jack of hearts. I put in a raise to $45 and this player makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of 9-3 deuce, two spades. He checks it and I decide to check it back. Turn comes a nine of hearts, so I pick up the backdoor flush draw. He leads into me right away for $100. And with the flush draw here, I don't think a raise makes too much sense. Uh, pretty clear call, so that's what I do. The river comes a six of clubs, so I miss my draw. He puts out a bet of $100 and just got to pitch it in here and make the quick fold. So those are the semi-notable hands thus far. Nothing too interesting but the table does seem to be picking up in action. So I'm gonna hop back in there and hope to run it up and hopefully make a free vacation out of this. Closing out a session here. Uh, it's about 3.30 in the morning, uh, a little bit spent. So I'm gonna recap the hands uh, in the next day or two. So 
Anyone else a fan of The Rock? Anyways, it's uh, just Sunday the 1st, getting ready to check out of the Airbnb here. If any of you are looking for a nice and affordable stay in the LA area, it's about a 25 minute drive from the Bicycle Casino here and the Commerce Casino. So a nice little location and a pretty budget friendly spot, only $75 a night and it's for two bedrooms. So nice little intimate spot in case any of you need a budget friendly option for staying when you're in LA. All right, just got a few more hands to run through from Friday. Uh, it's a must move game uh, for the 510 at the Commerce. So this next hand takes place when I move over to the new table. Another gun raises to $35. Hijack makes the call. I'm in the cutoff and I get greeted with Ace Jack again. Same hand as the first hand of the night. I decided to make the call as well. Just going to take the conservative line in position here, given that it's a new table and the big blind calls as well. We go four ways to a flop of King, Queen, Jack, two clubs. So I flop bottom pair here with the gut shot to the straight as well as backdoor club. Clubs. Action checks over to me and I decide to check it as well. The turn comes a six of diamonds and the big blind leads for $125. The other two players fold and I think I can call here uh, with a gutter ball to the nuts and I can still potentially represent some clubs on the river if that does come in as a bluff. So I make the call. The river comes a nine of diamonds and he checks it. I give it some thought to bluff it. I don't think I have the best hand in the spot too often here and I can feasibly rep a 10. I feel like he has a hand with showdown value here. If he had clubs, I would imagine he would still consider bluffing some percentage of the time given that he wouldn't have any showdown value with that hand and occasionally he can be checking and trapping with a 10 in his hand as well so i'm just not sure i can get him off any value hands and if he does have a flush draw that missed then i think checking back is the right play so that's what i do and he turns over jack deuce of clubs so he did have the flush draw uh, but he also had some showdown value uh, but luckily the ace kicker in my hand does play so take this first hand down and it looks like ace jack is uh, the hand of the night for me so far and yeah after that hand uh, went pretty card dead for the next two or three hours of the session. Nothing really happening and I think sometimes it can be frustrating when you're playing a session and you go through some spots where you're not picking up any hands to play but given that I was at a new location playing with new and different players uh, I try to turn that into a positive. I spent a lot of that time kind of assessing what people's tendencies were and kind of how they were playing so I think some positive can still be taken out of uh, times when you're card dead. Uh, it's good to utilize that time to you know find other ways to see if you can pick up on some details that might help you going forward in a game so just kind of a thought all right this next hand it's a seven way limped pot i'm in the big line with king jack of hearts uh, i can raise his hand sometimes but just decide to take the conservative line and check my option we go multi-way to a really nice flop for my specific hand holding it comes eight nine ten with two hearts so flop the flush draw with two overs along with the open-ended uh, nut straight draw. I decided to check it with the intention to put in a check raise, but unfortunately, action checks through. Hit the gin card on the turn, which comes a queen of spades. So I make the nut straight. I check it again, and it checks over to late position who puts out a bet of $40. I decided to put in a raise now for value. I raise it to $135. The under the gun plus one player cold calls, and the late position player makes the call as well. River comes a three of clubs and a bit of an interesting decision point. I can check it and hope that someone has a jack in their hand and put in the check raise to get some additional value. Problem is that that's not gonna be guaranteed that either player has a jack. And if they have any other strong value hands like two pairs or better, I think they're probably just gonna check it back in this spot. I ultimately settle on a pretty large polarized bet to the tune of $400. I can still rep some miss uh, flush draws here, which I technically do have to balance it out when I do have straights, which is actually what I have. So uh, I put out a bet of $400. The under the gun one makes a pretty quick fold and the other player tanks for quite a while. At first glance while he's tanking, it looks like he may actually make a hero fold here with a jack in his hand. Uh, he's a pretty good player based on what I was able to see in the couple of hours playing with him. And he looks like uh, he was gonna make a exploitative fold against me, which would be correct in this case. And with a combination of me being card dead and playing pretty tight this session so far, uh, definitely very reasonable for him to assume that I have the hand that I have here. And after tanking for a while, he does decide to fold. So uh, after he tanks for another minute or two, I think he doesn't have a jack anymore and probably was thinking about making a hero call with maybe a hand like two pair. Uh, but nevertheless, happy to take this one down. Probably could have sized it a little bit differently to get some additional value, but um, yeah. These next two quick hitting hands are against a player that was employing a very unique and different style at the table. This first hand, there are three limps and it gets to me a late position with pocket fours. I can limp along some percentage of the time, but I prefer a raise in an unraised pot, uh, especially in position. So I raise it to $60. Both early position limpers make the call and it gets to the aforementioned player in the middle position and he puts in a back raise, a really large one to $410. So nothing, nothing I can do here. I just got to pitch it in. So I toss it in the muck and the other two players fold as well. 
and this player was kind enough uh, to let us know the uh, pocket aces. So a uh, good fold, a little bit of a unique play for him to uh, play aces in that way, but uh, works out for him. Right, shortly after, the aforementioned player is in the under the gun position and he limps. I'm in under the gun plus one with pocket aces. So I put in a raise to $40. He gets back to this player. Uh, he gives me a little bit of a strange look uh, and says something along the lines of, I'm only gonna just call this time, uh, even though I shouldn't, and he makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of king nine seven, two diamonds. He checks it, I put out a c-bet of $50, and he makes a quick fold. He shows me pocket queen. So a bit of a run bad situation here uh, with the previous hand, obviously not being able to seal a flop with pocket fours. And then in this hand, he plays his queens in a very unique way and loses the minimum. So take this one down with pocket aces, but uh, could have been a little bit more. All right, in this next hand, there's one limper. I'm in the hijack with ace king offsuit, put in a race to $50 the small blind calls and the limper calls. Go three ways to a flop of ace, ace, seven, rainbow. Checks to me, I put out a c-bet of $50. Small blind makes the call and the limper puts in a check raise to $150. I'm in position, so I'm not gonna do anything else other than call and the small blind makes the full. Turn comes a three of diamonds, putting a backdoor flush on the board. He puts out a bet of $200 with $900 back. My read was that he was a bit of a splashy and stubborn player based on some previous hands that he played where he was calling down light. So I take a unique exploitative line and I put in a min raise to $400 with the hope of opening the door enough for him to consider a re-jam if he thinks I'm bluffing or making the call and uh, me being subsequently able to just jam most river. He settles on a fold. So don't get any additional value. Took a very unique, uh, strange line here. Didn't work out in my favor. I thought uh, applying a little bit of that type of unique strategy here was gonna pay, but he gets away, but still happy to take this one down. Just wrapped up a quick lunch at the Earth Cafe. Thumbs up for the fucker, right? Anyways, just wrapped up a quick brunch at the Earth Cafe. Uh, thumbs up for the breakfast burrito and the iced matcha latte. One more semi-interesting hand to run through. I'm in middle position with four six of clubs and I raise it to $35. I'll sometimes mix in some of these suited type holdings from early middle position for some range balancing. Get calls from the cutoff, button, and big blind. We go four ways to a flop of king six three two spades. Checks to me, a good uh, flop here for my perceived range. So I put out a bet of $50 and I get a call from the button. Turn comes a deuce of club, so I pick up additional equity. I can check it sometimes, but I like a bet uh, more so in this spot because the player on the button is a very good and capable player of taking uh, a hand away from me. And so rather than relinquish control of the hand, I decide to continue betting. I put out a bet of $150. He thinks for quite a while and ultimately settles on a fold. So take this one down. Pretty sure he didn't have a king or a flush draw. I think he would have continued with those hands. So if I had to guess, he probably had a hand like sevens or eights maybe. So all in all, a pretty smooth six hour session at the Commerce Casino. I would have liked to have a few of those betting decisions back, but uh, I was in the game for $1,500, didn't have to add on and cashed out $2,390. So nice little profit of $890. That wraps it up for this one on the way to the airport. So we'll see you all back from the Bay Area.